reason why someone would rent a car? I don't see why not, sure. Could that be a reason why someone would repeatedly rent cars for years, switch them up, so people couldn't track them down and kill them? Objection. Could that be a reason? Assume it's evidence. <clears throat> Could that be a reason? Sure. How, how about an individual whose friends had just been gunned down three days prior. Could you envision a situation where that individual would want to rent a car so no one knows what he's driving? Objection speculation. Ever ruled. Yes. Okay. And tinted windows. You said tinted windows can be used to commit crimes because you can't see in as well. Could conceal an identity. That's correct. That's what I said, yes. By that same logic, couldn't tinted windows keep people who are trying to kill you off of your scent, off of knowing what you're driving? Yes. Especially three days after they have murdered two of your friends in cold blood? Sure. Could that be another reason why someone would rent a car? Yes. Could that be another, a reason why someone would rent a car and break a rental agreement and put tint on those windows? Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. This warrant that you took out, sir, um, <coughs> for the rest of Mr. Stillwell, um, you charged him with murder. The murder of Shamal drinks, correct? That's correct. Okay. And you specifically charged him with the shooting of Shamal drinks, correct? Uh, I'd have to look at the wording, but I think he's I used the word partaking. May I approach your You may. This is my We're looking at a copy of the warrant that you took out, uh, assist you in remembering the wording? Sure. Grab the wrong one. Refresh your recollection, and if uh, after your recollection is refreshed, if you could uh, look up. Sure. Yes. Okay. In in fairness, you did say participate. Yes. In the in the warrant, but you said by shooting Shamel drinks. That's correct. Okay. On three fourteen two thousand twenty two. That's correct. Okay. So specifically. Your allegation in that warrant is that Mr. Stillwell was the shooter of Chamel drinks, correct? Yes. Okay. And we've talked about uh, some of the evidence that you think you have on this case. Uh, you know, let's just call it what it is. I, I know that we've been referring to the man in the pink hat. Okay, or the man with the slime or die shirt. You have BP video from uh, the corner of Windsor and Fulton Street, correct? Yes. Clear video. It's very good, yeah. And it shows my client wearing a pink Floyd hoodie and a pink hat. <laughs> and it shows Mr. Guimarvius Nichols, correct? Yes. <laughs> and it shows Mr. Miles Farley, correct? Yes. Okay, cool. And you had that video, and then you also had these rental records of renting the car on that day. Now, let me ask you this. Is there any indication at all, if, if we're talking about planning something, is there any indication at all that anyone would have known that Shamal Drinks was going to show up at the gas station at that time? No. Okay. Not that I know of. Okay. Do you, do you know where Shamal Drinks was coming from? 
no. Okay. And then you have video of from the FedEx, correct? I do. Okay, and that shows Windsor Street. Yes. And you maintain that that video shows that my client in his white Audi pulled up next to Shamal Drink's car. Correct? Yes. And you maintain that that video shows that my client <clears throat> shot Shamel Drinks. Participated, yes. Okay. I mean, your theory is that my client was driving. Yes. Okay, and your theory is that the shot was fired out of the driver's side of the car. Oh, the outer, yes. Yeah. Y your theory is that... Shannon Stilwell was in that white Audi and shot Chamel drinks at that stoplight. Yes. And your contention is that video, that FedEx video, will back that up, ultimately. That's my conclusion from my investigation, yes. Okay, cool. All right, so let's um, go back to where this investigation started. Uh, evening of three fourteen twenty two. Okay. Okay. And um, you see this red car with this gentleman inside who's sadly deceased, correct? Yes. Yes. And you arrived before the body was removed, correct? That's right. Okay. Now, this is your crime scene. I know that you weren't the first one there, were you? No. Okay, but this is your crime scene. Yes. So you're in charge of knowing the status of the crime scene and where everything was at the time it was first discovered? Ultimately, yes, I am. Okay. So, let me ask you. The Nissan Versa, the red Nissan Versa, before anyone came to the assistance, before Mr. Cheeseboro showed up, was that car still on? When I was there, I don't remember it being running, no. No, I'm asking, since it's your crime scene, when the first people showed up, to your understanding, it's your investigation. I wasn't. Speculation cost of hearsay. Is he the lead detective? He is the Okay, well, overruled on the speculation, and um, would your report contain all of that? It, it doesn't, if the, if the car was on or not. I know the, the lights were on as far as the car was running. The door was open when I got there. That's the next thing I'm going to ask you. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you're not certain. Sounds cer like he didn't know. So you're not certain. Um, okay, so the car was running. Or obviously, is that what you're not certain of? Obviously, it was running when he pulled into the stoplight. When I got there, I don't recall if it was running. I know the lights were on, the door was open. I don't recall if the car was still running or not. When you got there, the when lights of there, the car right. were on and the door was open. The lights were on. Right, the lights of the car were on and the door is open. And when we say the door, we're talking about the driver's side That's correct. front door. Okay. Now my question is, before you got there, before anyone got there, was that door open? That passing that front driver's side door to the Versa? It's my understanding it stayed closed until the paramedics or EMTs opened the door to check on the victim. Okay. How about um, Mr. Drinks' feet? Were they on the brake? I believe they were, yes. How about the gas? Was one foot on the brake and one foot on the gas? I don't recall that. You don't know or are you saying no, that's I, not true? I don't know. I okay. Know. Fair enough. And when you, your first, one of your first tasks was to determine the identity of this gentleman, correct? It's one of the first things, yes. Okay, and you weren't the only one there. There were other officers there, correct? Yes. And um, among those officers was representative from the gang unit, correct? Yes. Okay, Investigator Flores? May have been. Don't, I don't recall. Okay. Either way, even with the assistance of the gang unit on scene and all APD resources, no one recognized this gentleman, Mr. Drinks. Uh, he was not identified until we, officially identified until we did the fingerprint scan. Right. And that was about 1, 1.06 a.m. 
that next morning, correct? It was while we were on scene. I don't know exactly what time okay. it was. Okay, fair enough. Um, Miss Hilton, if you could do me a favor, please. Uh, could you publish, I'm sorry, Mr. Body said he was going to help me. You're going to help me with something else. Thank you. Uh, 107, Victor, Victor. Thank you, Miss Knight. Cell phone, um, do you see that cell phone in exhibit 107, Victor, Victor? Is it that one in the pocket there? Is that what that is? Yes, I see it. Uh, oh, that's on his arm, I do, yes. Plugged in. Do you see that cell phone? I do, yes. Okay. As an investigator of homicides, um, do you often collect, collect cellular phones? Yes. And that's from victims and suspects, correct? Yes. Okay, and, and reality is cell phones, if, if you're able to get into the cell phones and have authorization to get into cell phones, they have a wealth of information, correct? Sometimes they do, yes. They can have uh, call logs. They can have contacts, correct? Yes. They can um, potentially have tracking information, who you're in contact with. I mean, excuse me, places you've been. Yes. Um, you can learn a lot about a person from a cell phone, correct? Yes, you can. You can learn who their friends are. Yes. You can learn who their enemies are, potentially. Potentially, yes. Okay. In this case, as a lead investigator, you are aware that actually... Two cell phones belonging to my client have been seized in this case, correct? Um, I believe so, yes. And their contents have been extracted, correct? Yes. Okay. Now, Mr. Drinks, um, <clears throat> as lead investigator, did you ask the crime scene tech, tech or crime scene tech Davis or any other individuals to seize uh, or to collect Mr. Drinks' cell phone? Um, yes. Okay. And were you able, ever able to analyze the contents of Mr. Drinks' cell phone? I don't recall that, no. Okay. You don't recall ever seeing the contents? No. Okay. So as far as you recall, we don't know who is in Mr. Drinks' contacts? No. We don't know what he's been texting about leading up to this incident? No, I'm not aware of it. Okay. We don't know of anyone that he's had uh, disagreements with or squabbles with or anything like that from his cell phone? I'm not aware of any of that, no. Okay, and you're not aware because not saying that none of that exists in his cell phone, but you just haven't seen the contents of his cell phone? That's correct. Okay. All right. I want to talk to you about these videos, um, if that's okay. Sure. And Mr. Uh, Abate, I'm going to ask you uh, to just be on, be on standby uh, in case I need to publish anything. Thank you. Um, Detective... There are, we have the BP video. That's correct. Several different camera angles. That's correct. Okay. Uh, including outside of the pumps, inside the store from different angles. That's correct. Okay. We have the Kings Laker video. Yes. The surveillance video. And then we have the FedEx video. That's correct. Okay. Let's talk about the um, BP video first. And I'm not going to replay all the videos. Um. You see my client, Shannon Stilwell, in the, in the pink hoodie and pink hat um, arrive in the white Audi, correct? 
Yes. And the white Audi that was rented in his name. That's correct. And the white Audi that he told investigate, invest, investigator Viverito on March 16th. Yeah, that's the Audi I'm driving, correct? That's correct, yes. Okay. And it did have tinted windows, didn't it? Yes. All right. Um, you see him arrive at the store, and then you see Mr. Kumarvius Nichols um, arrive in a Ford Fusion uh, shortly thereafter, correct? Yes, sir. Mr. Nichols pumps gas. Yes. Okay. Um, Mr. Farley is an occupant of Mr. Nichols' car, correct? That's correct. Okay, they all enter the store. They're on video. Yes. Okay. Mr. Farley's wearing a slime or die shirt. That's correct. Okay. Um, do you know anything about Mr. Farley's background or history? No, sir. Okay. Do you know that he's a clothing designer? No idea. That he creates those shirts, those slime shirts, and sells them to the public? Okay. Okay. You were not aware of that before today? No, sir. Okay. So you see those three individuals go in and out of the store. Um, first, you see Mr. Nichols go up to the register with Mr. Stillwell, correct? That's correct. All right. And um, in these videos, in all these videos, you don't see anyone with a handgun or anything like that? No, sir. You don't see anyone that seems to be irate or upset, do you? No. Well, maybe some people in the store, but not these three individuals. That's correct, yes. All right. Um, you see Mr. Nichols make a purchase um, and buy some gum for Mr. Stillwell, correct? Yeah, he bought something for him. I couldn't tell what it was. Okay. But yeah, he did. Buy and this is the first time <clears throat> Mr. Nichols was in the store before he pumped his gas, That's correct. correct. That's correct. And you see Mr. Nichols joking around with the clerk, acting like he's pulling out all these bills. Right. And then you see Mr. Farley come in. Yes. And you see uh, Mr. Stillwell turn around on Mr. Farley and act like a, a monster and kind of scare right. Mr. Mm -hmm. Farley. And Mr. Farley does this weird pirouette. Right, yes. They're playing around. That's correct. Okay. Everyone seems, from the video, no one seems upset. No. Okay. Later on, you see Mr. Nichols come back in the store uh, to make another purchase, correct? Yes. Okay. Do you know what he purchases? No. Okay. Ms. Hilton, I'm going to ask if you could uh, play the video of where Mr. Nichols comes into the store for the second time and makes a purchase. If you could play that. Are you able to see what he is purchasing? It looked to me to be like some black and milds, maybe. I don't, okay. I'm, that's a guess. I don't know. Okay. Appreciate that um, answer. And I, I know that it's noted that it's just a guess. Um, and you can stop. Myself. Thank you. Your Honor, may I approach with DS-56? You may. Sir, I'm approaching you with what's been marked as DS-56. Do you recognize that image? Yeah. It's an image from... Uh... The series of video we just watched. Okay. Um, that's a still image from the video we just watched? It appears to be so, yes. Okay. And is that a fair and accurate representation of the video we just watched? An sure. image from the video we just watched? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Your Honor, at this time I would move to admit DS-56 in evidence. No objection. It's admitted. Uh, permission to publish? You may. Could those be backwoods 
Blunts. Yes. Okay. And when you when, do you know what backwoods are? So like a little cigar in it, something like that. Okay. Is it also something from your experience that can be gutted and used to roll a marijuana blunt? Yes. Okay. How long, to your knowledge, if you know, have you ever seen anyone, we'll just say on video, through uh, <laughs> police, through detective work, have you ever seen anyone roll a marijuana blunt? Uh, I'm aware of how it's done. I've never witnessed it. Okay. Uh, it takes some time, correct? I Depending on how experienced you are? Yeah, I would assume it would, it would yes. Okay. And is this purchase made right before Mr. Nichols returns to his car? Yes. When he's sitting there for like four minutes as idle as Miss Hilton said? Yes. Okay. Do you know, yes or no, whether what was going on in that car with Mr. Nichols was Mr. Nichols was sitting there using those backwoods to roll himself a marijuana blunt? Do you know? I don't know. Okay, thank you. Okay, in this, in the entire BP video, we see Shamal drinks show up, correct? Yes. Okay, and again, no indication that anyone was expecting him to show up. No. Okay. Um, while Shamal drinks was present at the BP, he walks into the store, correct? He does. Uh, how many times does he walk in the store? Once or twice? Uh, just once. Okay. And he makes a purchase. Correct. And there's apparently some other man on the video that's trying to steal some condoms or something, and the clerk is having a problem with him, correct? Yeah, there's a little Jackie kerfuffle. Jackie was so wasn't like he was trying to steal. But, oh. man. Okay. Sustained. Do you see a man getting into it, the clerk, and then show up, correct? Yes. Okay, and again, no indication that anyone was expecting him to show up? No. Okay. Um, while Shamal drinks was present, suddenly pulling condoms out of his pocket and throwing them back at the cashier. I, I remember that interaction. I don't know his condoms, but yeah. Okay. And, um, and then Mr. Drinks has some interaction with that individual and they leave together at the store. Yes. Okay. Do you know who that person is? The person that Mr. Drinks was interacting with? Do not. Okay. Um, have you ever interviewed the clerk about what was going on in the store? No. Do you know who the clerk was? No. Okay. Um, so throughout the entire time that Mr. Drinks is on the video, and quite frankly, Mr. Stillwell is on the video at the BP, Mr. Farley, or Mr. Nichols, do you see any interaction between Mr. Drinks and any of those three individuals? No. Do you see any hostility between Mr. Drinks and those three individuals? No. Okay, Mr. Drinks was having some hostility with the clerk, right? He was observing that, but yes. Okay, but not with these individuals. You don't see any mean looks or anything, do you? No. Okay. So then we go to the uh, King Liquor Store video. Yes. Okay. And just to be clear, do you know how we have... Timestamps on some of these videos and no timestamps on other videos, right? Yes. Okay. The videos that have timestamps, and I understand that uh, King Liquor and the BP are under the same management, right? You, you're not, you don't know. Not privy. It makes sense, but it's okay. not privy to that. All right, but do you have any reason to believe that the BP video? the timestamps would match perfectly with the timestamps. They're perfectly synced up with the FedEx video, for instance. Uh, I don't know. Okay. And do you have any reason to believe that any of these videos would be perfectly synced up with um, phone records or anything like that, like records held by Sprint or another phone company? No. 
in, in your experience as an investigator, businesses that have these surveillance systems, there are times, you know, you can get an hour of footage, but the time on that footage can be off, correct? It can be, yes. Okay. If not set correctly, yes. Okay. All right. In the BP video, besides the Ford Fusion, the Nissan Versa, and, uh, and the Audi, did you know any other vehicles of interest that piqued your curiosity in the BP video? No. Okay. How about in the King's liquor video when you see three cars driving up Windsor Street? Did you see any other cars that piqued your curiosity? No. Okay. Let's talk about the FedEx video. Um, we do see the red Versa go up to the left lane, correct? Yes, we do. And we do see what appears to be the white Audi, and especially when you link it up with the BP video, end up in the center lane, correct? That's correct. And then we do see the white Ford Fusion end up in the right lane. Yes. And we do see the white Audi run a red light, don't we? We do. Okay. Um, Sorry. <laughs> is, do you know anything about the history of the attempts on Mr. Stillwell's life? I do not. Okay. You, you don't know that in 2015, a, a car gunned up behind him or, or sped up behind the car that he was in and riddled the back of that car with bullet holes? Objection. He said he doesn't know about any of his symptoms. Still Sustained. Have you ever heard the name T.R. Jones? No. Okay. Um, anyways, you see Mr. Still will run that red light in the white Audi. I do, yes. And then you see Mr. Nichols in the Ford Fusion run the same red light? Yes. Okay, cool. In that video, we see Well, let, let, I'll get there in a second. I'll get there in a second. Let, let me, let's talk about LPRs. Uh, Detective Bender helped you with the LPRs in this case, correct? She did, yes. And that's, you consider this a, an important part of uh, police work because you're able to track the movements of specific cars. Yes. And you, at that time, uh, felt that the white Audi was a suspect car, correct? I did. And you wanted to track its movements. Yes. And you thought the white Ford Fusion was a suspect car. I did. And you wanted to track its movements. I did. And, and Detective Bender was able to get you all that information about the movements of those cars, or I shouldn't say the movements, but different places in time and different times where the LPRs picked up that light, those license plates throughout uh, those two days that you ran them. I think, I believe it was two days. Um, yes, what, whatever she found, she was able to identify the tag numbers and the cars and where they were, yes. Okay. As lead investigator, besides the Versa, besides the Audi, and besides the Fusion, did you ask Detective Bender to run LPRs on any other specific cars that you may or may not have seen in any of those videos? I couldn't ask her to run something I didn't see, and there was no other cars. No. No other cars that piqued your interest? No, sir. Okay. All right. You were able to obtain the rental agreement um, for this uh, Audi, correct? Yes, sir. And uh, you're aware that 
Mr. Stillwell rented this car on 314 uh, at approximately 3 in the afternoon. Well, let me check. Yes. That's correct. And you are aware that he gave his all of his personal information, his his license, his signature, his phone number, his address. He appeared on surveillance at the Alamo. He did all those things while renting that car. Yes. And you're aware that in the early morning of March 16th, which would be two days after this incident, investigator Viverito and investigator Flores spoke to him in the back of a police car after the house he was in was shot up, correct? Uh, yes. And, and that it, they took pictures, right? Yes. And you're aware that he told investigator Viverito, yes, that's the car I'm driving. He did. And you're also aware from the Alamo records that later on on March 16th, 2022, he actually called Alamo to extend his rental on that car until March 20th, correct? I wasn't aware of that. Okay. Um, could you look at your investigative summary, if you would? And I'm going to refer you to um, page 19. Okay. Okay, do you have, does page 19, it's page 19 of oh, 25. Yes. Yeah, at the very top you're talking about? Uh, I'm, I'm uh, about two thirds of the way down. Do you see a notation? 16 March 2022, 1337. Shannon wants to extend the rental or the rent. Yes, I do see that. Okay. And, uh, and then at 1337, they talk about a rate and then Shannon agrees. That's correct. Okay. So under your theory, my client appeared on video at the BP with this rental. Is on video shooting man out of the driver's side of this rental. And then two days later is telling investigator Riverito, that's my car, right? Yes. And then also later on on March 16th, seeks not to get rid of this car, but to extend the rental. It appears so, yes, sir. Okay. All right, let's talk about gunshot residue. Um, gunshot, you testified earlier in this case, and we, we talked a little bit about gunshot residue, right? Yeah, we did. And you said you got to be careful about gunshot residue um, because of the false false positives. Right, yeah, you could be okay. anywhere in the room. If a gunshot goes off, we all in here would have gunshot residue on us. Right. We're talking about microscopic particles. That's correct. That are expelled out of a vehicle. Uh, excuse me, out of a firearm when a firearm is shot. That's right. Okay. And um, the these particles are uh, expelled in a way that you just said, if someone shot a gun in here, we could all have gunshot residue on us. That's correct. Okay. And that would be unfair if I shot a gun to say, well, you have gunshot residue on you because that would be a false positive on you. That's correct. Okay. But gunshot residue um, does detect if a gunshot was fired in the area, correct? Yes. It's, yes. It's evidence of, that a gunshot was in the area, right? All right. Especially in, fa in fabrics and cloth and things of that nature, correct? Uh, I'm not a that would make sense to me, but I'm not an expert on it, but yes. Okay. Well, those, those type of materials would not be subject to something like hands where you could sweat the gunshot residue off, correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, and in this case, that FedEx video that you, that you viewed, 
Um, we see traffic lights, right? Yes. We can see brake lights, correct? Yes. We can see headlights, correct? Yes. What we don't see is a muzzle flash, do we? No. Okay. Now, you testified about shell casings. Yep. And you said you looked all over for shell casings um, on the scene. We did, yes. And shell casings are the cartridges that are expelled when a gun is fired. That's correct. Okay, and, and there were at least two or three shots fired just from looking at Mr. Drinks, the red Versa, correct? At least, yes. Okay, so you were looking for two or three or possibly more shell casings on the road, correct? Yes. Okay, and you didn't find any? None. And your conclusion was, you know, of course, maybe you missed them. That's always a possibility. But the other possibility, as you stated in direct, is the gun wasn't, the person who was shooting the gun didn't put the gun outside of the car where you would see the muzzle flash. The gun was actually inside the car when it was fired, correct? Yes. Okay, and if certainly if the gun is inside the car, that would cause gunshot residue to uh, be spread throughout the car. You, you assume so, yes. Sir. Including the headliner, correct? Yes. Okay. You decided to collect the headliner. Say again? Well, let, let me ask you that because I don't know that for certain. You worked along with CS crime scene technician Antoinette Green to process this car, correct? The car being the Audi. Mr. Stilwell was arrested yes, on March not, 17th. I'm, I'm trying to recall, because it's not in my report. I know, I know you were going to, but I, I don't. Do you have anything to refresh my memory? Do they have a crime scene report with my name on it? Because I don't. I don't have anything written by you, sir. Yeah, I don't. Okay, but let's, let's try to work through this. On March 17th, you know that Mr. Stilwell was arrested yes. on the warrant state you, um, that you brought on March 16th. Yes. Okay, and he was arrested in Atlanta. He, would, he wasn't in another state or anything like that, correct? Correct, yeah. Okay. And when he was arrested, he was actually still in the white Audi that he had extended the rental for, correct? Yes. Okay. And um, the Audi was collected as evidence, correct? Brought to police impound. That's procedure, yes. Okay. Are you not aware that... Uh, crime scene technician Green. Do you know who Antoinette yes. Green is? Is she a crime scene technician with APD? Yes. Are you aware that she processed that car? I don't recall for sure. I, damn, I, I know I've done several cars with her before, but in this particular case, I don't recall being with her to process the car. Do you Understood. This particular call. Do you recall a headliner was collected in this case, correct? You do know that? I do not. You don't know that the headliner of the Audi was collected as evidence in this case and analyzed? It makes sense that it would be, but I don't, uh, okay. I don't recall that, no, sir. In your experience, your expertise as an investigator, a homicide investigator, a headliner would be a very appropriate piece of the car to collect, to check for gunshot residue. Again, yes, sir, it makes sense. I just, I'm sorry, I don't recall. And it should have gunshot residue in it if a, if a gun is fired from within that car, correct? If it has not been cleaned, yes. Okay. All right. Do you know, as we sit here today, um, whether or not a GBI analyst tested that headliner for gunshot residue? Do not. You don't know what the results are either, do you? No, sir. Okay. Okay. 
You took out warrants on, on March 16th, 2022 at 6.39 p.m., correct? For my client as well as Mr. Nichols and Mr. Farley. Yes, well, 6.40 p.m., but yeah. Okay, 6.40 p.m. On the and 6th, that was 16th, yeah. And that was right after or shortly after you had that conversation with uh, Investigator Viverito in police headquarters where she identified the people that were in the BP That's video. correct. Yeah, her, okay. the Sergeant Belknap, yes. So once you had an identi identification from the BP, that's when you moved forward with the arrest warrants against Mr. Stillwell? That's correct. Okay. All right, well, I want to talk to you about your analysis of the FedEx video. Um, you have your report in front of you, correct? I do. Okay. At the time that you swore out these warrants against Mr. Stillwell, you had never even viewed that FedEx video, had you? I uh, don't think I got that till afterwards. I did speak with a representative who described it to me and sent me some still shots. Okay. And I'm going to I'm I'm going to go to page 14 going into 15 of your investigator report, investigative report. Okay. On page 14 going to 15, you write as of the writing of this report and this report was written on 3-20-22, correct? Well, that's when I started it, but yeah. Okay, so you started this report four days after you, sought the, uh, you obtained the arrest warrants for Mr. Stillwell. That's correct. You started this report four days after that. Okay. Yes. The, and, this part, now I had notes and all that stuff, but... Yeah. Understood. And you say, as of the writing of this report, the actual video from FedEx has been requested via a subpoena but has not been received. The above pictures were sent to me by FedEx corporate, by a FedEx, FedEx corporate officer who told me that he had watched a video which shows that the two white cars pulled up alongside the red Nissan forming a straight line across the road. And then suddenly the two white cars sped away against the red light and the red car stays in place. That's verbatim from your report, correct? Yes, sir. And your report is accurate to that fact? It is, yes. You, um, at the time of writing this report, and certainly at the time of bringing out warrants against my client, you had not watched that FedEx video. No. And, but you had spoken to someone at FedEx corporate that sent you some still pictures, correct? That's correct. And had told you what they felt they saw on that video, correct? That's correct. Okay. Who was that FedEx corporate officer who analyzed this FedEx video? I don't remember. Do you know that person to have any law enforcement training? Uh, not familiar with it. Okay. Do you know how many times that person watched that video before giving you his or her conclusions about what the FedEx video contained? No. Okay. When did you finally receive the FedEx video? I don't recall exactly when, it, when I got it. Do you remember what month? No, I don't remember. When did you, do you remember when you first watched that FedEx video? I've seen it several times, but I don't remember when, it, when I first saw it, no. Was it months after bringing up these arrest warrants on Mr. Stillwell? No, it wasn't months. It was a few days, probably. I, but well, I, I a few days would have been four days afterwards you started writing this report, and you didn't even have the FedEx video then. So could it have been longer than a few days before you watched the video? It could have it, Yes, it could have been. Okay. Um, and of course, you brought those warrants on March 16th, 2022, without any gunshot residue results from that white Audi. That's correct. Okay. 
You said you saw a car in that video, the FedEx video. Um, Miss Hilton, could you play the FedEx video for me? Thank you. And it can be uh, 101 20, we can start. <clears throat> You, I think you, it's fair to say you saw a car making a U-turn on the video and you saw it, it was a little odd? Yes. It piqued your interest? Well, it just, yeah, it did. I wouldn't say it piqued my interest. It just uh, went with the situation, I guess. I think you said you thought on direct, you testified, you thought that the person driving that car may have heard or seen something, correct? Yes, I did. And the reason you say that is because that person driving that car abruptly made a U-turn. Yes. Okay. I'm ready to go. It's not ready. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, if we could go to 101.20. Yeah, just... just That's Mr. Uh, that's Red Versa pulling up, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, and that would be the white Audi? Yes. And that would be the white Fusion pulling up on the right lane, correct? That's correct. That's not the car that t makes the U-turn, is it? No, sir, I don't believe so. Okay. And um, Mr. Stillwell is now running the light. He's no longer there, correct? That's correct. Okay. We see. Now this car pulls up. It makes an interesting U-turn, correct? Yes, sir. Your determination is maybe they did that because they may have seen or heard something, correct? Maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have no further questions. Thank you. Anything, Ms. Weinstein? No, Your Honor. Redirect? Yes, Your Honor.